Hi, now this is the next video in my series on Leibniz theorem. In the previous video, just to sum up very quickly, I showed you that if we got y equals uv, where that was the product of two functions of x, then we should already be familiar with the product rule for dy by dx. But what I went on to do was to differentiate dy by dx again, giving us d2y by dx squared, then again d cubed y by dx cubed, and again to give us d4y by dx to 4. And it resulted in these particular expansions. And what I showed you then was that they followed a very simple pattern. What we noticed was that each one started with a u, and in each subsequent term, it went up to du dx, d2u by dx squared, finishing on the same degree here as we started with. In this next example, u, du dx, d2u by dx squared, finishing with d cubed u by dx cubed, the same degree as we had here. And you can check it out in this example. Then at the same time in this product, we just did the opposite with dv by dx. We started with d2v by dx squared in this one, and it went down, decreased to dv dx, and then down to v. And in this second example here, dv by dx started off with degree 3, like we had here, and it went down in each term, finishing with v. Then we had the coefficients of each of these terms, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, and so on. And I showed you that these values came from Pascal's triangle. So if you're unsure of this, do go back and check out that earlier tutorial. Now all these results can be summarized in one formula which is known then as Leibniz theorem. And so if you've got y equals uv, where u and v are functions of x, then following this pattern structure on, dny by dxn is equal to the summation, from r going from 0 to n, of the products of these differentials. And we multiply that by this coefficient ncr. These values ncr are the ones that you've got in Pascal's triangle. Or you could just use the formula here, which again you should be familiar with because we discussed it when we were looking at the binomial theorem. Okay, so on this basis, what I'd like to do is just take you through another example. So looking at this example here, We've got y equals e to the power x cosine x, and we've got to find d4y by dx to the 4. So what I'd want to do is, first of all, write down the pattern structure that we get when we use Leibniz theorem. It's going to be the sum of these products of differentials. So starting off in that way, we start with u, go to du dx, d2u by dx squared, all the way up to d4u by dx to the 4, where the value here, 4, corresponds with the 4 that we've got here. And then I need to just basically do the reverse with dv by dx, starting with d4v by dx to the 4, and working my way down until I get to v. Then I've got to work out the coefficients that go in front of these terms. And we can either use NCR values through this formula or use Pascal's triangle. Those values would be the 14641 that we've got here. So I'll just put those in. The 1 there, the 4, the 6, the 4 and the 1. Obviously we don't need those ones there, I'm just putting them in as a token. Now. What I need to do next is just look at what we've got for u and v. u is e to the x and v is cosine of x. So when it comes to working out du dx, d2u by dx squared and so on, we'll need to start differentiating this. So therefore, if I work out du by dx, 
Well, that's going to be e to the power x. And if I was to differentiate this again, d2u by dx squared, it too would be e to the x, and so on. So in general, dnu by dxn is going to be e to the x. When it comes to v equaling cosine of x, well, this is going to keep changing because we should know that dv by dx, well, that's going to be equal to minus sine x. And when we have d2v by dx squared, well, that's going to be minus cosine of x. And we've got d cubed v by dx cubed. So if we differentiate minus cos x now with respect to x, we're going to get sine x. And then finally, d4u by dx4. Well, that's going to be cosine x. So there's all our values. So now all we need to do is just substitute these results into our formula. And if you do that, you'll get this result here. And you'll notice that the 4e to the x sine x cancels out with the minus 4e to the x sine x and just leaves the e to the x cos x terms to group together. And if you do that, you'll end up with minus 4e to the x cosine x. So a nice quick way then of working out the nth differential when you have got y equals a product of two functions of x, u and v. Okay, so hope that was of some use to you. And you should be able to use this method now to do very similar examples. So as usual, thanks for listening. And uh, I hope that you'll subscribe if you want to get notifications of any further videos that I upload.